You ever notice how a lot of times when you end a relationship with a narcissist, you find yourself completely isolated and alone? They divide by causing drama. They conquer by then having more control over you. This is a form of triangulation. All types of narcissists tend to want to discredit their victims. And this starts by the smear campaign. Especially if you have a supportive family, the narcissist is unlikely to want to spend time around them. Suddenly you look around and you see that there's no one with you. You have no backup. Your family's not around. Your friends aren't around. And yet before you met the narcissist, your life wasn't like that. You had family. You had friends. Everything was fine. You're not even sure how this happened. So a really basic definition of triangulation is when one person gains control over a situation or over people by creating conflict between the two of them by manipulating one or both people in that situation. They tell them they're crazy. They tell all the friends and family members, oh, this person's crazy. So narcissists have a lot of reasons for wanting to isolate you from other people, starting with the fact that very often they're living a double life. But it's bigger than that because here's the thing. When you have people in your life who support you, chances are that you're going to be far less likely to to actually allow the narcissist to control you. And in some cases, your family or your friends have controlled you up to this point because we do tend to attract narcissists. You first have to remember that narcissists have a relationship cycle. It starts with the idealization phase or the love bombing. And then you go into the devalue phase where things start to get bad. And this is where manipulation tactics like exclusion come in. And once you get through the devalue phase, of course, you go in right into the discard phase, which means the narcissist leaves leaves you either emotionally or otherwise. So it's important to remember that a narcissist is always calculating, always thinking of ways they can manipulate and get more control over people and situations and all of that stuff. Because they don't want to have your family supporting you too much against them. So if they kind of mess up in front of people or they cause drama in your family, they don't want to be around that situation. But very often, anyone who appears to support you or to go against what the narcissist wants for you is a direct bit of competition for you for your attention with the narcissist. These cycles are common to most narcissists. The exclusion is part of the devalue process. They use isolation against us, quite simply because it allows them to better manipulate and control us, like I said. And since they think that most laws don't apply to them, most rules don't apply to them, narcissists are all about not taking any blame. They want to be the exception to every rule. The narcissist is using this behavior to make you feel like you're not worthy, like you don't deserve to be loved, like you don't deserve to be included in your social activities or whatever else you're dealing with. On the other side of the coin, it's all about isolation and why, in any case, narcissists want to isolate you from anyone who will support you against them especially. The worst part of this is that in the process of using triangulation against us or the divide and conquer method against us, the narcissist actually separates us from our friends and people we love. Not only people we love, but also people who we really need in our lives, people who we really connect with on a deeper level. And that is where I think it gets really scary if you think about it. Sometimes they'll even try to isolate you from your own children in the same household or from the other parent if your parent is your narcissist. Whether we recognize it or not, most everyone's habits and behaviors are a result of some form of conditioning. And for those who have experienced the painful, all-encompassing abuse that a narcissist is known for, the conditioning hasn't always been in our best interest. They want your attention, you control all of that for them. Because once they've isolated us, they really have full control, if you think about it. They, they have full control over who we are, what we do, what we eat, what we say and think and feel, at least after a while, in some extreme cases. Now, not every narcissist controls every aspect, so don't misunderstand me. And don't assume that because you have control over some things in your life, that you're not with a narcissist. And the fact that so few people actually really get what you're dealing with isolates you even further because you feel a lot of shame for allowing yourself to even be in that situation in the first place. It begins when we're small children. Our parents' opinions of us begin to help us form our own opinions, our own perceptions of ourselves. But the bad thing is that when you are in a relationship with someone like this, one of the things that happens is that we don't realize that we're pushing these people away because of the narcissist. So there are some real serious truths that we have to discuss here. If we're cursed with narcissistic parents, our perceptions are skewed or twisted, often just plain wrong. 
That's because as children, we're kind of like sponges. We absorb everything in our environment, including and especially the opinions of our parents. If they tell us we're beautiful, we believe it. If they tell us we're horrible and we're sick and we're ugly and terrible, we believe that too. And it doesn't end there. We think we're pushing them away for our own reasons. We don't recognize that we have been manipulated to do that. Narcissistic abuse not only isolates you from the people in the outside world, but also from your own friends and your own family. Adding the opinions of your teachers, your siblings, your friends, and later those of your spouse, your boss, your coworkers, neighbors, and don't forget the lady of the dry cleaner last week that gave you the dirty look. All of this conditioning left unchecked can sometimes add up to a very negative self-image, especially if you don't know that you don't have to accept it. And this is not uncommon. So part of the reason they isolate you from other people is including sometimes their own family is because if you had access to those people openly, then you could probably find out exactly who they really were a little too quickly. That's why sometimes narcissists don't want you to meet their families unless their families are kind of in on it with them. You know what I'm saying? They're kind of flying monkeys or also narcissists themselves. We become what we perceive. We are what we believe that we are. You see this a lot. You see this where you will see one woman lie to another woman and say, hey, this other girl doesn't like you or she talked bad about you or whatever in order to separate the two females so that one friend can either control or be the only friend of another friend. They are so focused on keeping their false self mask on that they'll do almost anything to protect it. Excluding people is not just a mean way that kids deal with each other on the playground. It's also a tactic often used by narcissists as a way to control or punish the people they consider their narcissistic supply. You'll see this even sadly among toxic parents where you will see like one child lifted up above the other while the other child sits over there and cries and feels bad about him or herself because the narcissist doesn't want the children to be close. In fact, I've even heard clients tell me that they were not allowed to be close to their siblings growing up because their parents didn't want them to, I guess, divide and conquer the parents. For example, let's say that you and your spouse go to church together and at church everyone hangs out in the social hall afterward having donuts. If your narcissist is angry at you or upset with you, they may intentionally stand somewhere you're not and exclude you from the chit chat or the regular banter of the after church crowd. Somehow they won't invite you to get involved in the conversation they're in or you'll be pushed away to take your child to the bathroom or something while the narcissist tells jokes and gets all kinds of attention. So by showing some kind of favoritism or golden child status to one child, all the other children feel angry at that child and they rebel against that child. And this creates, of course, division among the siblings in toxic families. They will be very careful about which selves go out to the world, what images of their family, what beliefs about their family, and they'll do whatever they have to to protect that false mask and that false image of themselves to the world, even to themselves at times. Or maybe you have a situation where you have a woman who tells a friend that another friend flirted with her boyfriend or a woman who flirts in front of her boyfriend with another man in order to create some sort of distance between them. One of the things that narcissists tend to do when it comes to keeping you separate from your family is called the divide and conquer. In situations, say at work, where you have a fellow co-worker who wants to get the boss's attention and in order to do that talks bad about you. Because the narcissist is so likely to just really ruthlessly pit family members against one another, which they do directly because of the fact that they want to control everybody, they will do things like treat one kid better than the other. We've talked before about the golden child and the scapegoat, for example. And while they're treating that child better, they'll target that other child. So that obviously puts those two children at odds and they may never ever have a relationship as a result of that. In any case, none of this is good. Behavior that persistently excludes you from activities in your life, from social gatherings, from all of these things is quite literally emotional abuse. It's painful. It can make you feel awkward and uncomfortable and even if that person isn't doing anything but not talking to you sometimes that energy feels like it almost pokes you it's so big and heavy kind of feels like something sitting on your chest and you might find yourself if you're anything like me constantly trying to fix it trying to think of things that you can say that will make them really understand finally what you've been trying to say all this time and unfortunately it 
doesn't always work out that way. And in relationships, you know, whether we're talking about a familial relationship or a relationship with someone who is your romantic partner, having someone in a relationship to separate you from someone that you really care about, it's overwhelming and exhausting. They create this atmosphere in their houses and their homes where everybody's competing for his or her attention, the narcissist's attention and their approval. And because of that, again, they're naturally pitted against one another. In case you aren't aware, this is just another way that the narcissist attempts to control you. It is a form of emotional abuse and it's usually used by narcissists or people with narcissistic tendencies. It is all about putting the narcissist in the position of being in control of the situation and it's designed to help the narcissist make you shut your mouth as in to avoid you asserting yourself or having any opinion whatsoever. In some cases they do it in order to increase the conflict, make it more difficult for you, avoid resolving the conflict because that makes you uncomfortable and they like that feeling. Sometimes it's about not taking personal responsibility or not making a compromise. And in many cases, it's about punishing you for something that they think you did wrong, like a perceived ego slight. Of course, what happens is very often exactly what they want to happen. They get a reaction from you and they feel like they are in control of you. So you obviously, you're an empath, you understand how to deal with people, you have the ability to compromise, a strong conflict resolution skill set. You probably in general don't even enjoy conflict. So you're probably trying really hard to figure out how to fix what happened, try to make them understand you. But of course, this is generally met with contempt, disdain, more silence silence, completely ignoring you, whatever. And basically this makes you feel like you're nothing, like you're so insignificant that you don't matter or that you and your issues become less and less real, more and more non-existent for the narcissist. Of course, that makes you feel like you're not good enough, like you have nothing to offer, like everything's your fault. And before you know it, you might find yourself apologizing to the narcissist, even though clearly you're not the one that should be apologizing. If they're always vying for approval, then they can prevent themselves from being attacked by the narcissist. But at the same time, what ends up happening is that if one gets approval and the other doesn't, then essentially they're sort of forced into this position to protect themselves, much like the Hunger Games. You know what I'm saying? Where it's me or you, it's you or me, and what are they gonna do? They're gonna choose themselves, especially as children. And that sort of attitude will continue with them throughout their lives very often, and then you end up with another narcissist. There is the loss of attention. They don't wanna lose the attention that you give them, and this person might be someone who could cause them to lose your attention. Most narcissists are about as emotionally mature as a toddler or maybe up to a five or six year old child. They kind of pout. They don't want to play with their friend in the sandbox. They fight with their friends on the playground. They decide they don't want to share their toys, whatever. It's the same kind of thing. And just like a five-year-old, like we've talked about recently, a narcissist acts just like a child emotionally. They might refuse to talk with you, angrily storm off, and then you are left feeling like, what in the heck just happened? I'm confused. I'm rejected. I don't understand what the heck just happened. It's the same deal with a child on the playground. But in this case, since the narcissist gets to decide whether or not they're going to talk to you or give you a quote unquote chance, well then there's this false but strong sense of control. So the narcissist will then demand that you apologize for whatever it was that you may have done, some BS made up transgression or maybe just the fact that you had the nerve to, I don't know, set a boundary or ask for equal treatment. Sometimes this makes the narcissist want to abandon you and then you start the discard phase. And this is when you might start actually present an ultimatum and say, look, this is it, I need to know, yes or no. So then at that point, the narcissist might might decide to end the relationship rather than actually admit being abandoned because they might think, well, now you've set this ultimatum and you're saying you're gonna leave if we don't fix this and so I'm just gonna leave you instead. The fear of replacement. So you might be thinking things like, well, why would so-and-so worry if I have a same-sex friend or opposite sex friend, whatever you guys are not into, or why would my mother not want me to have a friend? Or why would my friend not want me to be close to my sister? These attacks, they can take a lot of different forms, like they can be narcissistic rage, they can be ridicule, they can be blame, teasing, any of that kind of stuff. It's that fear of replacement. How does that relate to those relationships? Well, it doesn't matter. It's all about narcissistic supply. You've got to understand that narcissists are limited people. They do not have the ability to feel empathy or to compromise or anything like that. So understand that you don't need to tolerate it. It's all about getting that false sense of control and 
in order to sort of reclaim the narcissist's fragile ego to give it some stability again. See, your spouse doesn't want your friend to take your attention. Your friend doesn't want your other friend to take your attention. They don't want to be replaced. The time that you spend with them, they want that time. They don't want to wait. When it comes to the partner, the narcissist does things like criticize them, project their own negative qualities onto them, bullying them, violently exploding their emotional vomit all over them. And then there's the fact that they don't want someone else to back you up. Do you understand what I mean? They don't want anyone to sort of have your back against them, right? So if they start to verbally abuse you, they don't want someone to point that out to you. And sadly, because of the fact that the partner does everything they can to try to keep the narcissist happy, a lot of times this means the narcissist ends up being enabled by the partner because they sort of have to support them in order to avoid being attacked. They don't want anyone to say, you're in a bad relationship, honey. How can you recognize that it's happening to you? One of the first things that I think you should think about is always consider the source. Always think about who it is that's talking to you. If you have a situation where you have, say, a narcissistic parent or even just somebody, a toxic friend, and they're talking bad about you to someone who you know supports you unconditionally, emotionally, or whatever, or who you know will have your back if that person does something to cause your life to be harder, think twice before you believe them. When we're talking about a more extreme narcissist or a sociopath or psychopath, it gets even worse because then they are all about control and power and then the healthy boundary that you set or the issue that you brought up it becomes a narcissistic injury their little ego gets involved and my gosh you suffer you feel completely bewildered, confused, emotionally devastated. When you're going through this, you're probably worrying about what that other person is thinking about you or what people around you are thinking about you. You're worried about getting humiliated publicly or at least within your social circle or your family circle. You probably feel really protective of either yourself and or some other relationship in your life. So if they're saying that your spouse or significant other is flirting with someone else, then you're probably going to want to push that someone else away from you and them. And whether this person is actually really close to you or not is irrelevant here because for whatever reason the toxic person is trying to manipulate that person out of your life. So a lot of times the narcissist uses the support, the forced support of the partner to further divide the family. And that of course causes the children then to feel less warmly toward the partner. If you're anything like I was, you might feel like you want to sort of just stop all the rumors and set everything straight and tell everybody what the truth is. Or you might want to have everybody sit down and have some sort of like almost intervention where you just like, let's just lay it all out on the line and figure out what's going on here. That's never going to work. And here's the really interesting thing that I don't think a lot of people think of. The fact is that things like the gaslighting and the manipulation usually lead to something that I don't think a lot of people recognize. You become sort of isolated from yourself as in you forget who you really are, or maybe you didn't even really know who you really are. See, the thing is that when you do something like that, when you do kind of publicly call out a triangulation like that, you're kind of sort of biting. You're doing what the narcissist or the toxic person wants you to do in that situation. Quite honestly, in some cases, I really think that the narcissist wants you to freak out and publicly rage and have a big scene in the middle of everything because if you do that, then you look like you're crazy, which is exactly what they're probably trying to make everybody think in the first place, if you're being honest. If this is happening to you and you've tried to share your feelings, you've tried to make your point, make set your boundaries, whatever, you have to recognize that you're not the problem here. If it's a chronic thing that's going on and on, you got to step away from it and you've got to stop walking on eggshells in order to keep that person happy because they won't be happy. You have to understand that a narcissist's communication patterns, they remain the same regardless of who they're talking to and dealing with. And this is true with you. It will be true with a new supply if one comes along. It will be true with everyone in their life who they're close to. And unless the narcissist chooses to change something or is willing to change something, then nothing changes. The narcissist does not change. Your reality is denied often. And so you start to not really understand the world. You go through a lot of cognitive dissonance, which is a conflict between what you actually see and what you know to be true or what you feel and what you know to be true. So like I always tell you, one of the most important things to do here is to think about what you have control over in this situation. And what is that? That's yourself and your own perception, your own reactions, nothing else. You can't control what that other person does. You can only control the way you react to that stuff, right? Yeah, in healthy relationships, this type of behavior can be changed because both partners at that point would be willing to work on it. It's just dysfunctional, but not unhealthy. But when you get to an unhealthy 
relationship with someone who is pathologically narcissistic, you've got to be focusing on yourself now. You've got to focus on self-care. And quite honestly, again, you just have to learn that sometimes it's just you have to walk away and detach in order to avoid feeding into the mind games. The narcissist will project their own abuse and corruptness onto their victims. But the cognitive dissonance is created when the narcissist constantly tells you that your reality is different than what it really is and then gets angry when you don't believe it so you start to question yourself. As long as you agree with the narcissist, it'll be fine. But when the narcissist tells you red is blue and the sky is green and the grass is orange and you disagree, then you start to think that blue is orange. Do you see what I'm saying? So stay focused on that, what you can control, and don't allow this person's stuff to get in your head. Now, I know that's so much easier said than done, believe me. But when you realize what you're dealing with, then is the time for you to take action. Really think about who said what and what it all means, and ultimately decide how you're going to handle it. If you know for sure that your friend probably didn't do those things that they're being accused of, or that your sister didn't do it, whatever, really think twice about the source. Which of those two people has hurt you more in your life? think about it and talk to the other person talk to your friend or your sister or your whoever it is that's being smeared in this case or that's being used in this triangulation if you're the one not being accused of something if you are the one being accused of something then if you feel the other person will trust and believe you and I would only make this effort once but I would reach out to the other person and I would say if you know me you know I didn't do those things and here's my side of the story and if that person can't trust you and, and understand you at that point, say, well, you know, I'm going to give you some space and you come and talk to me when you are ready and we'll figure it out. But please know that I didn't do X, Y, Z. This creates cognitive dissonance in you. The cognitive dissonance then undermines your own connection to reality, your sense of reality. But if you are the person who is being manipulated with this triangulation and not the person being accused, if you can bring yourself to do it, go and talk to the person who's being accused if you believe that they might be innocent here. It separates you from your own self. I know it's difficult to come across and figure that out when you've been so deep manipulated by the narcissist but just do your best to give it a shot you might like I did end up saving one of the most important friendships or relationships in your life it's worth a try the narcissist will try to suck you back in if they think that you're happy with them not talking to you they will try to hoover you but remember they also want you to chase them and beg for their attention they want you to feel out of control and like nothing and so if you want to win this deal if you want to stop being treated this way don't try to win back their approval don't try to get their attention. You begin to really fundamentally doubt who you are and doubt your own eyes, your own senses, and your own ability to see what's really happening. Be as objective as you can and always just verify every fact that someone like this tells you. And do your best to really keep in contact with those people who are important to you that you trust as much as you can. It's difficult when you're in a relationship with a narcissist because they try to push everybody away from you. They want you completely isolated so they can control you and tell you what you think and what you feel and all of that stuff. Take a minute, reevaluate. Is this really something I want in my life? Do I need this relationship here? And if I don't, what can I do to get out of it? Consider it a break. Consider it a period of freedom so you can take some time and think about how can you take better care of yourself and what kind of support can you get to move forward? What do you need to move forward away from them? That is what I would suggest. Someone who really cares for you and really loves you would never treat you that way. They would make some effort to meet those needs that you have and not neglect them. Because narcissistic personality disorder is so hard to detect if you haven't actually had any experience with a narcissist, this kind of adds insult to injury. The best thing you can do if somebody does start that tactic with you and you recognize it is just refuse to engage in it. Say, you know what, I'll talk to them about that, but thank you for bringing this to my attention if you want to say that much. When you try to talk to someone in your life about it, even often therapists and psychologists, and even if they understand theoretically what narcissistic personality disorder is, it's so hard to detect because number one, narcissists don't think anything's wrong with them. And number two, part of their whole shtick is to put that false mask on and make people believe what they're saying is true. Make sure that you're spending time with the different people in your life, not just the one person. You know, make sure you're seeing your friends and your family and anyone else who's important to you kind of on a balanced basis. If they aren't displaying obvious signs and someone hasn't experienced this type of abuse, they really truly just don't understand and they might think that you're just whiny or you're not really experiencing abuse but you're just thinking too much or you're reading too many articles on the Huffington Post or whatever. Remember what I told you, keep your own control. You are the one who decides how you feel, how you react, how you 
perceive a situation. So a lot of times when you reach out for support to somebody like your minister or your psychologist or even your own family, you're told, ah, you're imagining things, ah, you're worrying too much, you're thinking too much. And even, like I said, therapists will dismiss it. And then you're left going, am I the crazy one? Try to see it as raw and honest as you can and like take the narc glasses off. You know what I'm saying? Try to stay focused on the truth and not the illusion that the narcissist wants you to see. If you're dealing with somebody who has narcissistic personality disorder or any other personality disorder, you just might want to take anything they tell you with a grain of salt. You're further isolated, you're further confused, and you don't even know what to do with yourself. This is dangerous advice these people are giving you, but they might be manipulating you just to kind of make something happen, to get some desired outcome to happen in their own situation. If you're told something that is shocking or upsetting to you, take a minute or 10 and breathe and decide how you're going to react to it. When they say, you know, oh, you should go back to that person or, oh, maybe you guys can try again or, oh, he seems really sincere. Or, she seems really sincere. You have to listen to your intuition, which the narcissist has taught you not to do. You try to kind of develop a habit of not reacting initially. Just take a deep breath and think about it for a minute. It could change everything. You have to trust yourself and you have to recognize when you're watching videos like this or other videos that other YouTubers have done where you see yourself and you think, are they listening in in my kitchen window? How do they know what I'm going through? That's proof that you're going through something that not a lot of people understand. That's proof that you are being abused. I'm not saying that you have to be a total ice cube, but try to stay in touch with your emotions. Like you don't want to not have emotions, but you want to sort of have really close contact with them. You want to be really in touch with them and understand, like if you suddenly start feeling anxious and upset, ask yourself why that is. Be self-aware. If someone makes your life worse, whether they're physically striking out at you or not, they're not someone you want in your life, regardless of what label you want to put on them. It's about someone being healthy for your life or toxic for your life. Does that make sense? Be intentional about what your vibe vibrating out into the world, right? So do you want to vibrate fear and anxiety and upset? You really don't because if you do, well then more of those things come into your life. Remember that you can't control anyone else. You can only control yourself. And remember that your power lies in yourself. You are powerful as an individual. You are able to control how you see the world, how you perceive the situations and the things and the people in your life. You are able to decide what to do from there. My friend, you are worthy. You deserve to be seen. You deserve to be heard. You deserve to be in a relationship where your needs are met and your voice is heard. You don't deserve to be silenced. Take care of yourself and know that you deserve better. It is not the narcissist's responsibility or right to tell you who you can trust, who you are, what you may believe, what you may think. Remember that. I know they want to tell us who we are and what we can believe and think, but that's not their job, not their right, not their responsibility. It's okay to walk away from somebody who's being toxic. You don't have to sit there and take it, whether they're being toxic to you or about someone else. If you're feeling uncomfortable in the situation, walk away. You're allowed to do that. And if you're not, you have things to think about, my friend. But if you have friends, even if they don't fully understand, friends who truly support you, sometimes they can listen. And sometimes just having them listen is enough. But I truly think that having other survivors to talk with has made all the difference in the world for so many different people. Do you really want to be in a relationship with someone that has that much control over you? So how are you supposed to find support when you've been completely isolated? Well, there are a lot of different options. There are tons of online support groups, some in-person support groups. Me personally, I offer several options. You can join SPAN on Facebook. Book. Just go to queenbeing.com slash span. I also offer coaching and a lot of other options. I've got a podcast. Hit up queenbeing.com to get a full scale of what the options are if you're interested. So what do you think about all of this? Have you been in a situation where you have been a victim of the divide and conquer method of manipulation? That's the question of the day. Question of the day. And the question of the day is, have you had a narcissist isolate you from friends and family in order to manipulate and control you better? Or why do you think that happened? Have you been isolated from other people by a narcissist? Or is this part of the experience that you didn't have? Share your thoughts, share your ideas, share your experiences in the comment section below, and let's talk about it. As always, thank you so much for being a part of my day and a part of my life. And hey, thanks for letting me be a part of yours. It really does mean a lot to me. Now, before I go, make sure you take a look at the videos I'm going to leave for you here and there. And while you're here, hit that subscribe button right over there so we can stay connected and continue on this healing journey together. I'll see you soon.